saints and friends. I'm Cookie Heath. Perfect. And you are at Casey Bible Fellowship. <laughs> the home of the longest Bible study you've ever been to. you ever been to. <laughs> but it's good. Right. So, so we're we're at uh, part nineteen. We're at part nineteen. Of unity of the body. Unity of Christ. the body of Christ. And its connection to the communion meal. This started with our discussions of what we acknowledge when we take the communion meal. Mm -hmm. And to not acknowledge it means you shouldn't be taking the communion meal, because when you take the communion mm -hmm. meal, this is what you acknowledge. Right. These things that we're teaching here. All right. All right. Can we pray? So, yep. We're going to pray and get back in the Word. All right. Heavenly Father, today we're so thankful for your goodness and for your wonderful works unto the children of men. And through the Lord Jesus Christ, we acknowledge you as the creator of the universe. We acknowledge that all the fullness of thee, O Lord God, has been deposited in a man, the Lord Jesus Christ. Even him, who's the supreme ruler, and authority of all creation. We acknowledge it today that he rose from the dead, he was buried, and he died for our sins. Strengthen us today, Lord God, and yes. we'll be strong. Give us grace whereby we might serve you with righteousness. Yes. Give us strength whereby we might serve, serve you with virtue. Give us strength whereby we might serve you with full joy. For it is in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So we're so, now in where? Romans chapter 8. And as we were um, uh, as we were in this journey, this trek, this track, whatever you want to call it, it's been a journey. Um, below these 18 weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The reason we're reading uh, these uh, passages here is to let you know about what we've been discussing the last two weeks, right. that uh, we are saved in hope of God's fulfillment of eternal inheritance. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit deposit in us is his guarantee that it's going to occur. That guarantee talks to you 24 hours a day and gives you assistance in suffering. That's what we're going to be reading right here right. from Romans chapter 8, verse 14. Read. 8, 14. Okay. Um, for all who are allowing themselves to be led by the Spirit of God. Listen to these words. Okay. For all who are allowing themselves to be led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. What did that say? You have to allow. God ain't making you do anything. So the Spirit is leading us. And I'm, I'm we got to follow. Is that for what you're saying? all who are allowing themselves to be led. Okay. So you, it, it, yeah. it's never God is making me. The question is, are you allowing God to lead you? Okay. What are you submitting to? See, everybody says submission. Oh, that's such a nasty word, submission. No. In the kingdom, submission is is absolutely necessary for us to have fellowship with God. You must say, I submit my will to the will of God. We just, I'm not making this up. I know I'm reading out an Amplified. Read it again. For all who are allowing themselves, for all who are allowing themselves, for all who are allowing themselves to be led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. How you become a son of God? Allow yourself to be led. So therefore, we have a leader. 
we do. He is God, the he, Holy Spirit. He is. And so he who is leading us has given us a counselor. Let's, let's read on the 15. Here we go again. For you have not received a spirit of slavery leading again to fear of God's judgment. So if you are afraid of God's judgment, then you receive the spirit that he didn't give you. That's a flip. Yeah, the flip. If you're afraid of God's judgment, you have not received the Holy Spirit. Well, that's hard. And and okay. and I mean, you know, many of us say, you know, just give it to me straight. Just give it to me, you know, in my well, here it is. I'm 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 throwing it in your face as hard as I can throw it. Will you catch it? If you don't catch this, you're gonna always be asking God for stuff He's already given. And if you've got children and they keep asking you for the same thing over and over again, you're going to do one of two things. Give it to them or pop them in the mouth. Don't you ask me for that again. I said no. That's our flesh. God says here in verse 14 and 15, for all who are allowing themselves to be led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. This is more on you than it is on him. Are you allowing yourself to be led? For you have not received a spirit of slavery leading again to fear of God's judgment, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons of the Spirit producing sonship by which we joyfully cry, Abba, Father, which is Daddy. The Spirit himself testifies. Uh oh, listen. Here's somebody, his testimony. We're in court. <laughs> We're in court. Somebody's testifying. The Spirit himself testifies and confirms together with our Spirit, assuring us that we believers are children of God. Wow, that's great power right there. That's great, 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 great. You got, you got two things agreeing. The Spirit of God and your born again spirit. That's two witnesses. So those that are born again, they have the Holy Spirit on the inside talking to them, telling them you're a child of God. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now your head may be telling you something else. But that's not what's the power here. Your head's not in authority. Your spirit is. Okay. And there's a comment at the end of verse 16. It goes right into verse 17. What does it say? And if, he, and if we are his children, then we are his heirs also. Heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ. Sharing his spiritual blessing and inheritance. If indeed we share in his suffering, so that we may also share in his glory. Yeah. So the suffering part of it is uh, very, very uh, important. Well, yeah, yeah, but so is the glory. Yeah. So therefore... They're two sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. You get the suffering and the glory. See, what we want is the glory without the suffering. Sorry. If you get one, you got to get the other. You don't worry about that. And the uh, Hebrew believers that we talked about a couple of weeks ago, they were involved in great suffering and were commended by the writer Oops. of the book of Hebrews for that suffering. Yeah. And therefore, that writer encouraged them to not give up. to show faithfulness amidst suffering yeah. and to consider that suffering as training. 
So you see down here in verse 17 where it says, um, we're his children. And if we are his children, then we are his heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs of Christ, sharing his spiritual blessing and inheritance, if indeed we share in his suffering, mm -hmm. so that we may also share in his glory. So if we endure the suffering, then we will be rewarded with glory. And, and notice what Paul says about this suffering, verse 18. For I consider from the standpoint of faith, what is faith? Giving yeah. God what he asked for. That the sufferings of the present, of the present life, are not worthy to be compared to the glory, 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 suffering, glory, yeah. suffering, glory, that is about to be revealed to us and in us. You gotta go through it to get to it. That's what they used to say when I where I was growing up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next verse. For even the whole creation, all nature, waits eagerly for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration and futility, not willingly because of some intentional fault on its part, but by the will of him who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will also be freed from the bondage to decay and gain entrance into the glorious freedom of the children of God. Wow. Okay. So what is that saying? Well, the creation is looking for redemption. Yeah. Just like it was broken. Just like you we and I mm -hmm. are looking for redemption. And so so here, here are all the entities looking forward to redemption from the Lord God through Jesus Christ. The New Testament saints, the Old Testament saints, and all of creation. That must mean that the Lord Jesus Christ has sufficient power to accomplish all of that. And, and, and so in, in, in the case of the uh, New Testament believer and the Old Testament believer, Many of those New Testament believers and Old Testament be believers um, uh, have uh, uh, written examples of their faith towards God for us to study. Right. All right. And um, the Lord Jesus Christ said, All authority has been All given authority. unto me in heaven and earth. And since he rose from the dead, he was given all the power of God. It's going to take that power of God to get the reward for faith to the New Testament and Old Testament saints and to redeem creation. And so the Lord has got to release a tremendous amount of power to do all of that. And yeah. if he created this world to start with, He's going to get that done. And he has given assurance to every born again believer through the Holy Spirit right. of God. So you, you see down here, the creation is groaning, verse mm -hmm. 22. Mm -hmm. Verse 23, we're groaning. Right. Read verse 22. For we know that the whole creation has been moaning together as in as in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only this. That's that's the creation part. Okay, next. And not only this, but we too, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, a joyful indication of the blessings to come. Yeah, see, that's, that's that uh, guarantee. That's yeah. that down payment. Even we grow eagerly as we wait eagerly for the sign of our adoption as sons, the redemption of and transformation of our bodies at the resurrection. For in this hope, we were saved 
by faith. Yes. And hope, the object of which is seen, is not hope. For who hopes for what he already sees? Who hopes, who hopes for what they already see? Nobody. Nobody. That'd be stupid. That would be that would be most. You see it. Why well, I gotta? Well, I sure hope I get a glass of water. There's the glass of water right there. Reach out and reach out and touch. <laughs> um, reach out and, and grab hold of the glass. You don't have to hope for. It. You don't have to wish for. It. You don't have to beg for it. You partake of it. All right. Now, now let's put this into some perspective here. Uh, when you became born again. Be born again is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. When you got born again, the, the Holy Spirit was placed in your spirit, letting you know that you're born again. Mm -hmm. That's the job of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit motivates faith. Yeah. And once that Holy Spirit gets put in there, that Holy Spirit tells you 24 hours a day, 24 hours a day, 24 hours a day. You have been purchased by the Lord God, and when the Lord Jesus returns, he will resurrect your body, whether you are alive when he comes or whether you are risen from the dead when he comes. He will resurrect that body, the bodily immortality. And in this hope, we have salvation. So our salvation is not complete until this redemption of the body occurs. Right. This is what you got to get. Right. And so therefore, you must maintain faithfulness to God right. so that you be counted worthy of God's kingdom. Right. So you see here, we are saved in this hope of the redemption of the body. In this hope we were saved. That's what it says in verse 24. And the earth is waiting so earth it is waiting can get too. what it wants. So everybody is everybody going to be receiving is. God's power mm -hmm. when he returns. When he returns, he's got to resurrect billions of people and give them this uh, uh glorified body here that we're talking about. He's got to do it. And so it's going to take power. You know, it took power to raise Jesus from the dead to start with. Mm -hmm. And that power is going to be released again to resurrect all the people of God. It's good news. All right. So, verse, verse 25. 25. But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait eagerly for it with patience and compassion. Oh, All right, so what did the writer of Hebrews tell us about faith? He told us it was the substance of things hoped for. And he told us that the things that we hope for are things that have a divine guarantee of God. Mm -hmm. And this, what we're talking about here, is divinely guaranteed of God. You are going to get that glorified body if you maintain faith. You're going to get it. And so, therefore, you don't see it now. Mm -hmm. But because you have a relationship with God, you are going to have the consummation of salvation. Yeah. And so, you groan waiting for it. You groan because maybe you go through this difficulty, that difficulty, the only of the difficulty. You are in the uh, area of suffering. You're tired of that suffering. No, the suffering is training for you. And therefore, we have verse 26. In the same way the Spirit comes to us and helps us in our weakness. We do not know what prayer to offer or how to offer it as we should, but the Spirit himself knows our need and at the right time intercedes on our behalf with sighs and groanings too deep for words. 
And he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit is because the spirit intercedes before God on behalf of God's people in accordance with God's will. Oh, my God. This is some critical scripture right here. And to understand it, you have to understand who the Holy Spirit is. You ready? The Holy Spirit <laughs> is God's helper. He helps us. He does not do it for us. He is the comforter. Mm -hmm. He is the helper. Right. He helps the believer. And what does a helper do? Assist you says, in a task. There you go. Now you're getting it. So this is exactly what this writer has said. Mm -hmm. Read that first sentence again. In the same way, the Spirit comes to us and helps us in our weakness. See that help part? Did he say he took away our weakness? No. He helps us he in helps. our weakness. He helps us. So we're groaning. Mm -hmm. The creation's groaning. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit comes and helps us in our groaning. And read the rest of it. We. we we do not know what prayer to offer or how to offer it as we should. But the Spirit himself knows our need and at the right time intercedes on our behalf with sighs and groanings too deep for words. All right, now stop right there. Mm -hmm. If we're not praying, how can he help? We got to be praying before the Holy Spirit comes along and helps us. He don't do it for us. Mm -hmm. He helps us because he's a helper. Now, let me help you out since we're talking about help. Help. Uh, you married folk out there. I'm talking to y'all. Maybe you, you're you not married people. Y'all can listen in, but be quiet. Okay. So, listen. A wife, which I am, I am a help to my husband. Now, why am I a help to my husband? Because he's doing something. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. If I'm stepping on your feet, lay your hands on them. Pray in the Holy Ghost with deliverance. I see where help. you're going with this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Help. The Holy Spirit is the help God sends his people who were doing something. Oh, there you now you got it. If you're not doing something, wow. you don't need no help. You don't need help. Husbands, men, if you're not doing so you if you're not challenged in the task that you are setting yourself to do, you don't need a wife. Get busy doing something. You'll get a wife. So if you're showing faithfulness to uh -huh. God amidst suffering, you're being faithful, and you're considering it as training, enduring hardness as discipline, the Holy Spirit comes along with groanings unutterable and helps you pray and communicates the will of God mm -hmm. on your behalf. He don't do it for let, you. Let me help you understand help. There was a time when I was troubled with falling asleep. It still bothers me, but I'm getting better at it. And I used to pray, oh Lord, help me sleep. I need, Lord, I need to go to sleep. I need 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 sleep. And I needed sleep. Well, one time I read in the Bible that the Lord gives his beloved sleep. And I said, well, I'm his beloved. I'm going to sleep. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, the Holy Spirit quickened the scripture to me that got me out of begging for something that God says he gives his beloved. I've used it 
for many people. I can't sleep. I can't sleep. I'm like, well, are you his mm-hmm. beloved? Correct. And they were like, well, yes. If he gives you sleep, then go to sleep. But then in that moment, if you don't go to sleep. It's on you. <laughs> if you don't get up into bed, turn out the lights, lay down. Okay. Yeah. He did not give you sleep. You're just not partake of me, partaking of what he has given to help you. Now you got it. Now you got it. The word of God is your help. The Holy Spirit is that which God uses it to quicken you, to bring life to you, so you know how to respond to the sufferings that we all go through. If you can't sleep, that's a suffering because God created these bodies to rest. If you think you need a pill, if you think you need a drug, if you think you need a drink so you can sleep, that's not what God said. Yeah, just, just get a revelation of who the Holy Spirit is, and then you understand these verses you that we right, read right here in verse 26 and 27. People get the idea that the Holy Spirit does everything for the saint. Uh, look. Yeah. <laughs> the Holy Spirit might he say, is a helper. The Holy Spirit might, might might come to you and say something. You might hear it in your spirit, or you, you're reading an article, or you're watching a program, or you, you're fishing through the web, and, and something jumps up at you, like coffee causes most people to have insomnia. And you're like, oh, I do drink six glasses of coffee a day. I'm going to stop drinking coffee and, and, and let my body begin to have the sense of this is now time to rest. I've overloaded with a stimulant and it doesn't know how to settle. And you're drinking coffee because you're not sleeping because you're sleepy because you drink coffee. <laughs> so you, 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 you have to give heed to those promptings, those little somethings out of nowhere. So little, just your help is not a far off. Your very breath. Yeah. Yeah. It's in your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. And notice what it says here about what the Holy Spirit does here. Uh, you go down here, verse 26. Uh, I should like to have you uh, read the last sentence of verse 26. Just read it. We. Wait, wait. Okay. We. We do not know what prayer to offer or how to offer it as we should, but the Spirit Himself knows our need. And at the right time, intercedes on our behalf with sighs and groanings to keep too deep for words. Now, what does that word intercede mean? It means to meet with someone. So, interceding, Holy Spirit comes, meets with us, and helps us with groanings. Mm -hmm. Notice that word, groanings. Same thing that sighs. We're doing and the earth is doing. The same thing. Mm-hmm. We're waiting on God to fulfill his promise. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our tribulation in these things. Verse 27, read it again. And he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is. Because the Spirit intercedes before God on behalf of God's people in accordance with God's will. Now, you know you can't lose in this. Because if the Holy Spirit comes along and helps you pray, we're groaning. God the Father sees it, puts it in a bowl, Mm -hmm. and all prayer goes in this bowl. You got to read Revelation on that. And that bowl, God looks at it. Okay, there's a prayer from Mm Cook. Now look at this prayer right here. Mm -hmm. Uh The Holy Spirit helps her pray that. Uh Bam, I'm answering it. That's this verse, Mm -hmm. verse 28. And we know with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, causes all things to work together as a plan for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his plan and purpose. Oh my. And we know, we're not guessing, we're not hoping, we're not wishing. 
We're not bargaining. We know. This is one of the most misunderstood scriptures uh, in, in the Book of Tom Bible amongst the saints here. Uh, I'm going to read the, my translation on so you can see exactly uh, what I'm saying here. This is what the King James says on verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them who have loved God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And what generally is misunderstood about this is um, we got to understand that when this verse is written, you got to connect it to all the previous verses we just read. It's not a standalone verse. You, you, you don't just pull that out of there without understanding that the creation is groaning, the saints are groaning, the Holy Spirit is groaning. Mm -hmm. We're looking for eternal inheritance. Right. And so everything you go through in terms of the suffering aspect to demonstrate faith, is working for your good. Mm -hmm. That's this verse. So for all of you out there that are trying to rebuke suffering, <laughs> get that suffering away from me. All who are godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution because in suffering, you get to demonstrate your loyalty to God. Mm -hmm. You get to demonstrate your communion with God. You get to demonstrate your fellowship with God. You get to demonstrate faith. Mm -hmm. When you demonstrate faith, you're going to be approved of God because it's impossible to uh, uh, please God without faith. Right. You got to believe that he is and that he's a rewarder yeah. of those he that diligently, diligently Seek him. And if you're going to be diligently seeking God, you're going to have the Holy Spirit coming along to, watch this, help you. <laughs> He's the helper. Helper. Right? So, that's this verse. Now, watch verse 28 and verse 20, uh, uh, 9 uh, and go together. Also, verse 30. So, okay. start with verse in fact, read 28 and then read down into 29. And we know with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, causes all things to work together as a plan for good for those who love God, to those who are called according to his plan and purpose, for those whom he foreknew and loved and chose beforehand, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that would be Jesus, yeah. and ultimately share in his complete sanctification oh. so that we would be the firstborn, the most beloved and honored among many believers. And so that he, he said, we. Oh, so that he would be the firstborn, the most beloved and honored among many believers. And you know what this is saying? This is saying... We, who are believers in Christ, the one new man, he foreknew us. Mm -hmm. And he predestined us to be conformed to what Jesus Christ looks like right now. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ is immortal physically. Mm -hmm. And that's what every member of the one new man is looking forward to. Mm. And therefore, all things work together for your good to advance the consummation of salvation. Right. So now, go down here to verse 30. 30. And those whom he predestined, he also called. That would be you. And those whom he called, he also justified, declared be free of the guilt of sin. That would be you. And those whom he justified, he also glorified them to a heavenly dignity. Okay, verse 31. I mean, he also glorified raising them 
to a heavenly dig dignity. What then shall we say to all these things? If God is for us, who can be successful against us? Wow. Okay, so you did something naughty. And and I'm condemned forever. The blood of Jesus was greater than the blood of lambs and goats and rams and sheep and and put away sin forever. Put away sin forever. The penalty for sin has Damn been baby. paid forever. forever. But I was so naughty. That God is that. God is so much greater yeah. than your naughtiness. That's that discount the covenant the covenant is not broken you because you blood. because of you the blood was shed to make it a forever covenant now because you did something naughty you feel bad okay yeah. if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our so sins. so you don't think god can forgive you for your naughtiness see you say you serve a mighty God, but you act like you serve a weak God. Yeah, we, You think this depends on you. Yeah. It doesn't depend on you. Your only job is to receive it. The work was done on his behalf. He did the work and we get the relief. Or the release. In other words, God is for you. He's for you. No one can be against you. If God is for you, because the sacrifice that he paid for you and the whole world, it has been completed in Christ. He said, back here early in this, in, 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 in uh, Romans 8, mm -hmm. okay? The spirit himself testifies and confirms together with our spirit that we believers are children of God. Do you believe that? We, we we can't go any further in the goodness of God until you believe that. Wow. We we can't go any further. We might as well not take about talk about the healings. We might we're not gonna talk about the we're not talking about nothing else because you don't believe the thing that grounds you in the kingdom. You're trying to be good enough to fit in. He said, I handled that. Come on. I'm going to read something else for you, okay? <clears throat> for all who are allowing, 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 allowing themselves to be led by the Spirit. Notice here, God is not throwing a, a, a noose around your neck and dragging you like a stubborn mule into his family. He said, are you... All who are allowing themselves to be led by the Spirit, you are the sons of God. What does that mean? That means I'm going to allow myself to be led. You have to yield to the Spirit of God. You have to yield. You know what the yield is? It's that sign you never stop at with your car and you get pulled by the police. You know, that yellow sign that says yield. And you just... Zoom. That means... Give way to it. Give way to the wooing of God. Don't fight him. Yield. Remember, God is for you. He's for you. And therefore, no one can be against you. The price has been paid. The price has been paid. The Spirit himself, the Spirit himself, the very power of God, the very spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, that Holy Spirit, he is testifying and confirming with your born-again spirit. Your issue is you got an unborn-again head. You remember that whole 
renewing your mind. Uh -huh. You got to renew your mind to these truths. Yeah. Yeah. So all this goodness, all this goodness, all this goodness, all this goodness that God has for his children, you will not be able to partake of it until you understand that you are indeed already a son of God. Well, when I when I get myself together, I'm going to be no. You can't get yourself together. That's why Jesus had to be the the the, the substitute for to for our sin, because we couldn't get ourselves together. We couldn't live holy. We couldn't live righteous. We could we we couldn't go week to week without disobeying what God's rules were. But God sent his son wrapped in human flesh to become the substitute for every man and woman on this planet who wanted fellowship with God and had no way to do it because sin was the barrier. Right? That price had to be paid. So go down the third. Can I read my version on this? Yeah. Down here in uh, Romans uh, 8. Uh, 831. Okay. And uh, I happen to have here the old school. New King, the, not new. This is the King James mm -hmm. Bible. Verse 31. What should we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Now, those are questions. What should our answer be? What should I answer to? What we better say to these things is that we are going to have the redemption of our body. God's going to fulfill his promise because the work has been done for that promise mm -hmm. to be true. And then the other question is, if God be for us, who can be against us? What's the answer to that question? Nobody. That is the right answer because there's no one higher than God. Highest authority there is. So the one that has the highest authority in all creation wins is uh, for you. <laughs> There's nobody in uh, the rest of the creation that can uh, be against you mm -hmm. because the one that could be against you, God, says you're sinless yeah. and righteous. There you go. Verse 32. He that spared not his own son but delivered him up for us all how shall he not with him also freely give us freely give us freely give us all things? What's the answer to that? That's a question. Did you have a question? 31? 32. 30. He who did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him Graciously give, give us, us all, all things. things. All right, now, so his son mm -hmm. is the most precious thing in the universe, mm -hmm. and he was given for us. Mm -hmm. How much more mm -hmm. all things? That's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. here. So you go down to verse 33, another question. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Who's God's elect? That would be you and me. His children. Who are born again. Mm -hmm. Who shall lay anything to our charge? Nobody. The only person that can lay anything to your charge will Won't. never do it for all time. Why? Jesus died as the Lamb of God mm -hmm. to take away. any charge against you away and nail it to his cross. Right. So that's the answers to these questions here. Verse 34. Who is he that condemneth? Who can condemn you? Nobody. The only person that could condemn you 
this when we're done. Mm-hmm. And we never will who for is, all time. Yeah, who is the yeah. one who condemns us? Christ Jesus is the one who died to pay our penalty. In other words, the penalty for sin has been paid. We, again, we, he took our sin, we take his righteousness. That's the great exchange. That's very smart. Okay? So, anybody tries to condemn you, your reply is, Jesus took my sin. Go to him about that. Go, go to him about that. I don't have anything else to do with sin and his penalty. Jesus handled that. So in other words, no one can condemn you. No. And Christ can't condemn you. He's the one because that Because the free. judge of the universe has said you are forever free. There you go. That's Who got goodness. something to say about it? Come to me. I mean, you know, you you remember having that kind of mouth when you were like, you know, a kid? Oh, he did? Oh, you tell him come talk to me. I'll handle this. Right? Now, the other part of this that can be explained from my translation, this is verse 34. Who is he that condemned? It is Christ that died. Mm -hmm. Yea, rather, is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession intercession for for us. us. Read into this. He ever liveth to make intercession for us. He is our faithful high priest mediating on our behalf. The only person that can condemn you (laughs) will never condemn you. So you stop condemning yourself. Yeah. 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 Verse 35. Who should separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Those are two questions. Mm -hmm. What does your version say? Verse 35. Who shall ever separate us from the love of Christ? Nobody. Will tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? No. No. Verse 36. Just as it is written and forever remains written, for your sake we are put to death all day long. We are regarded as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors and gain an overwhelming victory through him who loved us so much that he died. All right, so, so you see where the victory is? The victory is in faith in Christ amidst suffering. Mm -hmm. And therefore, Paul writes verse 38 and 39. Mm -hmm. Read it. For I'm convinced and contend to be convinced beyond any doubt that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present or threatening nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the unlimited love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Do you see how big our God is? Unlimited. That big, no bigger. That big, not Not bigger. bigger. That big? Even bigger than that. I mean that, you know, in infinity plus one. <laughs> yeah. This is the reason Paul could write such passages like this in the eighth chapter of Romans. Basically, Paul is saying, okay, trouble, suffering, bring it on. That's not it's bad. not worthy to be compared to the glory that's going to be revealed when uh, Christ returns and fulfills his promise. And therefore, the writer of Hebrews could say, cast not away your confidence. It has great great recompense of reward. 
you have need of patience. After you've done the will of God, after you've endured hardness as a good soldier, Jesus Christ, after you've endured suffering, after you have treated suffering as discipline, after you have gone through this and gone through that and maintained faith, This is where the uh, uh, writer of 1 John could say, uh, who is he that overcometh the world? Mm -hmm. But he that believeth that Jesus is the Christ. So whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. It's the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. Amen. Okay, mm -hmm. Mrs. Stokes, you're on. I'm on. Well, you know where I'm going, don't you? Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> we are turning over here to, um, where are we? 1 Corinthians 11, 23. That's what I have. In the Vero Amplified. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you read yours. Okay. We're having a little trouble with our internet. So I'm mighty slow. Mighty slow. We are um, back at what we call the Lord's Supper, the Memorial Supper. This supper is not for God, it's for us. It's to remind us of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, what that sacrifice bought for us and where it brought us okay it is um it is all encompassing it is spirit it's soul it's body that's 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 everything this rem memorial dinner lets us know reminds us reminds us reminds us that a debt was owed and a price was paid and jesus took in him all that we had committed and then he took all that was in him and put it in his people. For I received from the Lord himself, this is 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three. For I received from the Lord himself that instruction which I passed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This represents my body, which is offered as a sacrifice for you. Body. Body. Offered as a sacrifice for you. Why did we need a sacrifice? Because the sacrifices were given to cover sin at that time but the body of christ was sacrificed to deal with sin for all time the last sacrifice no more sacrifices no more were needed after his sacrifice this is my body sacrificed poured out Broken, per scourged for your freedom. Substitutionary. He took our place and we took his. He was lowered into the lowest parts of the earth. We were raised into the highest heaven. That's the exchange. This represents my body, which is offered as a sacrifice for you. Do this in, in affection, in affectionate remembrance of me. Take, eat. Thank you, Lord.
Thank you, Lord. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. He took the cup. Hallelujah. Saying, this cup is a new covenant, ratified and established in my blood. Ratified and established. Ratified and established. In the law, once the blood of that perfected, that perfect lamb had to be examined and checked to make sure it was perfect. Then it was slain. Its neck was uh, was was slit, and that blood was poured into the vessels. And then the, that blood was sprinkled on the people and on the implements of worship. So that that high priest could go before the presence of God. Jesus saying, my God, my God, this blood of mine is going to give you entry, entree into the very presence of God. No more hiding behind high priests. No more hiding behind veils. No more um, can't go because you're the wrong lineage. You're not the correct lineage to go there. This is going to open up a new and living way for everybody that receives this sacrifice, this meal, knowing that they are one with God. Amen? Amen. This cup is the new covenant, and my blood do this as often as you drink it in affectionate remembrance of me. Partake. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are symbolically proclaiming the fact of the Lord's death until he comes again. And as I say it every time, he's, he's coming, coming back. Again. He's coming again. You can say come, Lord Jesus. He is coming again. So, saints and friends, we appreciate your coming and spending, giving us this donation of your time, your energy, your intellect. Go to the website. Leave us. You're at the website. Leave us a, a like, a dislike. Go home and never do this again. Well, we're already home. But <laughs> leave us a word of encouragement, a word of I don't agree. Whatever. You got a question? We know we got answers. We serve a God that knows. So leave us something on our on our Facebook page, Hastings Bible Fellowship, and now on our uh, new YouTube. Our new baby, YouTube. Hastings Bible, Hastings Bible, Bible Fellowship. Fellowship, same name. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. So go over there, leave us a comment, a like. Share. Let's have a discussion. Whatever we want to know that you're listening, that you're gaining um, knowledge, understanding. You have questions. Come on. Let's have this conversation. Let's get this thing open. Let's open up our hearts. We are not afraid and not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay? So, on behalf of Cookie and Stokes. At Hastings Bible Fellowship, we say God bless you. We love you. And until next time, you be the best you you can be in Christ Jesus.